Hi, I'm Amanda Chang and I'm back. Okay, so everyone knows that I'm currently taking a gap year and why did I take a gap year? Because I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in and I don't want to fit in. So on my gap year, I'm looking to spend my time productively and you know, find some work to do. If not like, I would literally be rotting away in my bed all day, every day. <coughs> So like with COVID and heightened alert that's going on in Singapore right now, it was really important to me that I found jobs that were also work from home friendly. You know, in case I get caught for a quarantine order. I literally ended up here because I sat on the wrong seat on the train. So I was considering jobs that I'm interested in but not necessarily related to what I will be doing in the future. So I'll be going off to study architecture but that wasn't necessarily what I was looking for in terms of the stuff that I wanted to do now. I mean, I have my whole life ahead of me to work in those fields so I didn't necessarily want to do that now. And the last thing is that I was looking for jobs with flexible hours because I still sort of wanted to like be my own boss and like be able to like go out with my friends but like not anymore. Please. Yeah, and also I want jobs that pay well because I want that money. Thank you. Okay, so currently I have two main sources of income, which is my mom and my dad. I do freelance video editing and I also give tuition. And I also have a third one where I write book reviews for a website, but like that is like kind of informal. So like, let's talk about video editing. So I'm currently editing for two local influencers here in Singapore. So they are Mark May and Saffron Sharp. And my experience with them so far has been pretty good. I'm really enjoying myself. It's honestly a good time because like, I'm a teenage girl as well. How do you do fellow kids? So they're like super nice, super chill with me. And like, I do enjoy the work that is being done. And previously I worked as an intern with Mongabong Bong for about 11 months. And that was so fun. Love Love you, love Mong. And I also had some experience shooting and directing a video for a shoe company. Girl, how did I start video editing? Everything I know about video editing is completely, completely self-taught. So the first video that I edited was shot and edited on my iPhone. I used like this app, Splice, I think. <coughs> I think it's called Splice. To edit the first ever video that I did in Canada, which was about like my trip. I did it like in the car during one of the road trips. I don't know, maybe I can show it. Like, it's not that bad. <laughs> I told you that this was not good. I used like the 30 day free trial of Final Cut Pro, picked it up and then I invested money in it because like it's a program that I feel is very easy to use. There are other like great programs out there like... No, actually there are no other great programs out there. Yeah guys, start on Final Cut Pro. I hate Premiere Pro so much. It's so not user friendly. Oh, and Procreate. Like I use Procreate so much when I edit videos. It's like, and it's like 15 bucks. Like it's so worth it. Oh my God. Thank you, Procreate team. For me, I was able to get my start because I interned with Mong and then from there, like, I was able to build my skills and then I could like sort of reach out to other creators. I guess for people who are looking to get into video editing, like you may have to take on like a few free projects at the start in order to like build your portfolio and to develop a good workflow because when I first started, like my workflow was all over the place. It's gonna be so bad. Having this experience would make future projects that you're getting paid for a lot easier as well. The next thing, how do you find clients? I don't know, you tell me. Please, hire me. It goes to... Pink Friday is in stores tomorrow. Give it up for Pink Friday, you guys! I would just say like, shoot your shot. I slid into Saffron's DMs to ask her to give me a job and she was like, yeah girl, and we are like friends, I guess. Will she ever watch this? Does she hate me? The next thing that helps is like word of mouth, but I feel like that one is really, really hard to control as well. Honestly, most of the time, like especially for these kind of informal jobs, you can kind of just find it on like people's stories. Like people post stories like, oh, you know, I'm looking for an editor and then I just apply through that. Last thing is like, don't be afraid to apply for jobs. Like if you have some experience and you sort of know how to work the software, don't say no to yourself. Let other people say no to you. Wow, amazing advice. Don't think that you are underqualified for something because you never know. For the pricing, I set it as a percentage of the market rate because I'm not a full-time video editor so like I'm not there yet I'm not like a Da Vinci god and I take into account like you know the length of the video how much effort goes into making the video the graphics everything don't undercharge yourself though because like I did that a lot at the start so Amanda what do you learn from editing videos for other people for like six months well Amanda I learned that you need to limit the number of reviews and comments and take this seriously no no shame um in my personal experience right I've had like some clients try to take advantage of me giving like an infinite number of reviews because like I was not really confident confident in the work that I was doing. Clients just take this to like, oh, I can just make her do all the work in the world. You know, I can ask her to try this or if I don't like it, I can ask her to try that. Which is like, it is just too much work. Sometimes I feel a bit frustrated because like clients think that video editing is like, but like video editing is like, 
Another thing is that before you start, always communicate with the client about the amount of money that you'll be getting paid for the project. It's so important for you and the client to be on the same page. The next thing is that you always have to communicate the amount of time that you need to get work done. Okay, for me personally, I work best when I have a deadline. So when I don't have a deadline, I'm just like, okay, I'm just not gonna do anything. Which is honestly so bad. But I'm a massive procrastinator, so like... Um, chill. Anyway, so... This last thing took me so long to learn. I really, really struggled with it. Sometimes what you think looks the best is not what the client thinks looks the best. And like, you just need to accept that. Sometimes clients get back to me and I'm just like... But it is their project at the end of the day, it's not yours. As in, you can sort of share your thoughts and your opinions about it. But at the end of the day, if they still want what they want, you have to deliver it. Except for this channel. On this channel, I can do whatever I want. And that's why I'm doing it. Let's talk about tuition. Currently give tuition to two IB Econ students, but I am giving away my notes for free. To get clients, I applied with like the Telegram tuition chats to like find clients, but I don't really like doing that because you have to pay like a commission fee. Like your first two lessons go towards the agency, which is like not money in my pocket. So I don't want to do that. It is like still better to find students with like word of mouth. Yeah, and some students actually prefer like recent graduates to be their teachers rather than like 50 year old teachers because like they think that you have like the tips and the cheat sheet and the hacks in order to score well. For pricing, I use the market rate, which is about like $50 to $60 per hour because I teach JC. I also charge like slightly higher sometimes if I'm using like my own materials. So for example, when I teach econs, I teach with like my own notes that I use during IB. Honestly, after I started teaching tuition after a year of not being in school, when I opened my notes, I was like, bro, what is that? Oh my god, what is that? Now all of my tuition classes are being held online because of, you know, Corona. So on Zoom, I connect my iPad as like a third member of the call so that I'm able to write things out so I can like draw graphs and everything and like just get used to like using the annotations on Zoom even though they are so irritating. <sighs> yeah. So Amanda, what do you learn from giving tuition for six months? Well Amanda, I learned that I hate tuition. Giving tuition over the past six months has been like a really mixed bag of experiences. So some of them have been really good and some of them have just been like... <laughs> Like something that I personally do is that I don't really bug the students to do their homework. I feel like the time that I spend with them is really just to like help them brush up and like to pluck the gaps of like what the school is not able to teach them or like what they are not able to understand or process lower. Just try to be patient and understanding. You know, especially in Singapore, like the education system here is already really, really difficult. So like the students are like struggling and stuff. So just try to make like those one and a half hours to two hours like a pleasant time for both of you. I feel like that's most important. Let's talk about book reviews. So I write like book reviews for like a local website here in Singapore and I just got this because I run like a book account Ta -da! where I review books and then they reached out to me and asked whether like I was interested in writing reviews for them and I was like yeah sure I mean I really do this in my spare time. This is not really for money but more for like me to build my writing portfolio and I'm really doing this of interest because I love reading. I really like it because it encourages me to read books like more in depth especially the books that I want to review but the thing is that I'm setting my own deadlines in this and like this requires like discipline and like perseverance and like I just don't have it. If anyone has like any recommendations for book reviews like you can drop them in the comments below except for Normal People by Sally Rooney like I hate that book so much. So, in conclusion, money is out there for you to make. You just need to go and earn it. Okay, I'm not gonna share like how much I make a month, but these jobs are like work from home friendly, they pay well, I feel, and like I still get to be flexible with my own timing. So like, I'm quite happy that like I figured out this algorithm of jobs at the start of this year. And I'm really blessed and privileged that my parents were really supportive of me as I was starting out on video editing as well. I completely understand feeling like burnt out. Like sometimes I just wanna like, you wanna know what? No, I am gonna leave. Thanks for watching. Hope this video is informative. If anyone wants like a how I edit videos thing, I would be so down to do that. Because I love talking about video editing. Everyone that I know who edits videos does it on Premiere Pro. So like, I want to talk to other people who use Final Cut Pro. I'm on that hustle guys, I'm on that grind. CEO entrepreneur. Go and make that money guys. Go and get that bag. You're welcome. Stay safe. Peace out. Bye.